Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Sylvia, and today we are going to be discussing the origin of Halloween. Now, just as a disclaimer, I don't claim anything in this video as mine, and I did research everything to the best of my ability, including name pronunciations. Some of them are a little more difficult, and I have seen conflicting reports on how to pronounce something, so I'm going to go with the most common way that people pronounce things, and I apologize if it's wrong. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Halloween has been celebrated for over 2,000 years and was originally known as Samhain. The Celtic people of Ireland recognized this day as the end of the harvest and the beginning of the dark times, also known as winter. They believed on October 31st to November 1st, the spirit world and the physical world were closest and the, the spirit could cross over and walk among us humans. Eventually it became known as Halloween and a lot of the ways that we celebrate Halloween today did come from the original Samhain holiday. For example, a lot of the Celtics would wear costumes and dress up as spirits in order to blend in with the potential evil spirits that would cross over onto earth on this holiday. It was believed that loved ones who had passed on would come back on this day and visit their families who remained on earth but it was also believed that e evil spirits could pass into the living world as well, and many people were afraid of this. They had shrines for the people that they loved, and they had sacrifices and offerings for the evil spirits in order to appease them and keep them at bay. As time went on and Christianity spread, this was put to an end. November 2nd, 1000 AD was declared a church-sanctioned holiday. Many believed that the church was attempting to take over Samhain and get rid of the holiday altogether and replace it with their own form of celebration. It was very similar to Samhain, minus the sacrifices. They would celebrate people who had passed on and rejoice in all of their loved ones who could potentially be walking among them that day. Over thousands of years, it began to be pushed back and eventually became November 1st was all Souls Day or All Saints Day, and October 31st became All Hallows Eve. So instead of celebrating Samhain, people would celebrate this church-sanctioned holiday instead. It actually wasn't until the 1930s that people began to dress up as things other than spirits. In the 1930s, people began to dress up as celebrities or their idols or even things that they wanted to be when they grew up. And later on, people started to dress up as characters from movies like Harley Quinn, Joker, Batman, whoever it may be. And people would use this day as a way to cosplay. Later on, in more recent years, people even dress up as memes, and I find that to be hilarious. And it's even better when someone dress up, dresses up as a meme and you can recognize what it is. It really shows how far we've come from just dressing up as spirits and then dressing up as celebrities and now dressing up as a joke, basically. Trick-or-treating is another tradition that has changed over the years. Originally, trick-or-treating was never even a thing, and treats and offerings and sacrifices were only offered up to evil spirits as a way to protect themselves and keep the evil spirits away or pleased so that they would not be bothered on this day where evil spirits could act as humans and move things around and torture them and kidnap them and whatever it may be. After a couple of centuries, the poor would begin knocking on the wealthy's doors, dressed up in these costumes in order to ward off the evil spirits, and they would ask the wealthy family for food, and in exchange, the poor family would pray for the spirits of the wealthy family's past loved ones. Because this was a day that the spirits could enter the physical world, there was often shrines and people would think about their loved ones and pray for their loved ones that had already passed on. And the poor would offer more prayers and support for this family in exchange for food. Sometimes the wealthy would ask the poor family to do tricks for them in exchange for food. And I think that this was probably a way to embarrass and humiliate the poor family for being poor. But after a couple more centuries, children began going door to door and they would recite poems, do talented tricks, 
sing songs in exchange for sweets, and then they would move on their merry way and on to the next house. They would also still be dressed up in these spirit-like costumes because they were so afraid of the evil spirits. And they didn't want to be seen as... They didn't want to be bothered by these evil spirits. Later on, especially in America, the singing of songs and reciting poems or doing tricks in exchange for sweets was gone. They didn't do that anymore. And instead, they would just go to door in these costumes and trick or treat, you know? They would ask for candy in exchange for showing up at the door, I suppose, and dressing up in these cute costumes. The last tradition I'm going to talk about today is the carving of jack-o'-lanterns. Originally, jack-o'-lanterns were not carved out of pumpkins, they were carved out of turnips and potatoes. And eventually, as time went on, and especially in America, they began to realize that pumpkins were so much easier to carve and it was a lot simpler to have pumpkins on your porch as opposed to a turnip that could very easily fall over. Jack-o'-lanterns were always used as a way to ward off evil spirits and there's a folk tale from Ireland about where its name comes from and a specific man or spirit that these jack-o'-lanterns ward off. The story is about a man who was nicknamed Stingy Jack and was a well-known trickster. He played pranks on everybody and they were really mean pranks. No one was safe, apparently including the devil. One day, Jack tricked the devil into climbing up an apple tree. Once the devil was up there, Jack surrounded the bottom of the tree with crosses, knowing that the devil could not touch or cross over a cross. So, the devil was essentially stuck up there unless he agreed to Jack's terms. Jack told the devil if he would not take his soul to hell when he died, Jack would let him out of the tree. The devil agreed, and they both went on their merry way. Jack continued on playing these horrible pranks, and eventually one day he died. After he died, he attempted to go into heaven, but they rejected him because he was so mean on earth. So, he went to hell instead, and the devil rejected him too, because, well, he promised not to take his soul to hell. So Jack was very afraid and he didn't know where to go, so the devil gave him a little bit of pity and gave him an ember from hell. It should be noted that Jack's favorite snack was a turnip and he always had one on him to snack on. He carved out this turnip, put the ember from the flames of hell, in the turnip and used it as a way to light his way through the dark and scary purgatory, thus being named the jack-o'-lantern. And now, if you want to avoid Jack coming to visit you on All Hallows' Eve or Halloween, you put a jack-o'-lantern out to ward him off and guide him on his way to the next house. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All of these facts were originally on my Instagram. I just went into a little more detail here and clarified some things, and I know some people like to hear things as opposed to read them. I know I do, especially it's nice to listen to videos on my work commute. But if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, let me know what you think, and if you want more facts, more daily facts, follow my Instagram. The link will be in the description. Have a good week, guys, and I'll see you next time.